Today we're going to be taking a look at this dumb fume 12 volt 300 amp hour lithium ion phosphate battery. This thing is a whopping 300 amp hours which is amazing for the size. Here it is next to a standard 100 amp hour battery and as you guys can see it's just slightly bigger but you get triple the capacity supposedly. In the box you also get your terminals looks like you get four that's awesome. You get a user manual just kind of gives you some safety stuff, how to store the battery, maybe some good useful information. Tells you how you can hook it up if you want to use it for solar and things like that. Charge discharge curves and kind of some more specs here. It'll do 200 amps discharge. Tells you all the voltage settings. Over current discharge protection, 850 amps. That's very high. I would guess that they don't even have that turned on. Guys, the reason I bought this battery, the biggest thing is number one, the size. I love how compact it is. It's got these really nice carrying handles. We're going to wait here in a second. I'll show you how much it weighs. But the biggest thing about this battery is it was on sale on Amazon for $200 and I believe $68 shipped to my house. And that's crazy cheap. That's seven cents per watt hour. You don't ever see that this cheap in these batteries. These dumb fume batteries have known to be very cheap. I've seen a few videos of people testing the 100 amp hour versions. And apparently you can get those below $100 all the time on like Team or AliExpress, you know, different distributors like that if you look hard enough. And apparently some people have been having good luck with them. So I wanted to test one. We're going to try this thing out. We're going to fully charge it, do a capacity test, see if we actually get 300 amp hours. We're going to do a discharge test, see how many amps we can pull out of it. Then we're going to take the battery apart. We're going to see if it has a low temp cutoff feature that works. We're going to look at the BMS, try to look at the cells, judge the overall build quality of the battery and see if this is worth the sub $300 that we paid for this battery. As far as how to hold up long term, only time will tell, but I do want to keep testing this thing and using it. I do love the value that you get. I love the size that you get. Crazy how much capacity. This is over 3,800 watt hours of capacity in the battery, very small. So let's get the scale out and weigh this thing real quick. And it looks like it's about 57 and a half pounds. Pretty heavy, but you'd expect that for 300 amp hours. Just for some comparison's sake, we have a standard 100 amp hour battery and it weighs 22 pounds. As far as dimensions go, we have 13 and a half inches long, seven and a half inches wide, and nine and three quarter inches tall. And at the price I paid for this, you could actually buy four of these for around 1200 bucks and have a 300 amp hour 48 volt battery. Guys, that would be insane. That's over 15 kilowatt hours of capacity, if my math is correct. Almost 16 kilowatt hours. So that's it guys, this is just the unboxing. Now we're gonna go ahead and start testing this thing. I'm gonna put it on a six amp charge, which is gonna take forever to get this thing to fully charge. And then we will start our testing. All right guys, we got our dumb fume 300 amp hour battery fully charged. We have it connected to our capacity testing rig that we use on all our batteries. Because it's a 300 amp hour battery, we're gonna put a 0.2 C load on this, which is going to be 60 amps. So I'm gonna go ahead and set the charge verter to pull about 60 amps on the 12 volt side of the inverter. And once we get all that set up, we're gonna let this test run until the battery shuts off and we'll see how many amp hours we get. I did go ahead and reset our meter to 300 amp hours. We have 100%. I'm going to go ahead and reset this to zero. So that's reset to zero. So this is going to show us our total amp hours once the test is complete. And there we go. We have about a 55 amp load. That's about as close as I could get with the charge verter. So that's about 730 watts. So that's pretty good. It should take a little over six hours to complete this test. So that's it. I'm just going to let this run, do its thing, and I will catch up with you guys in a few hours. Hopefully this thing passes. I was a little bit hesitant about this dump fume, but it looks like it's going to pull full capacity. So we're going to keep you guys posted. We just wrapped up the capacity test and we were able to get 305 amp hours. That's awesome. The battery passed our capacity test. Now I'm going to fully charge the battery again so we can do a max current discharge test to see how many amps we can pull out of the battery and to see if it has a high current protection that actually works. So the battery is now fully charged. Once again, the specs on this battery, they say has a 200 amp BMS. So we're going to see if we can get continuous 200 amps out of it and we will even push it a little bit harder if we can. We have it hooked up to a 3000 watt low frequency pure sine wave inverter. So we should be able to get plenty of power out of that thing. And I have two space heaters to use as loads. First, we're gonna turn the inverter on. I'm gonna bring you guys up a little closer so we can see. Come on. All right, here goes. We're gonna plug in the first space heater. We're gonna do low. We're at 48 amps. And now we're at 90 amps. Let's plug in the second space heater. Oh, actually we're at 125 amps. 127, we're at 160 amps. Let's go a little higher. 230, 240 amps, 250 amps. That's over 3000 watts and it's still holding strong. So there we go. We got 200 and almost 280 amps out of the battery. The voltage is starting to drop pretty good because my wiring is not thick enough, but you can get at least 276 amps and it does not look like the battery is gonna shut off. We managed to pry the cover off this big old battery. Let's go ahead and take a look inside and see what we have. All right, that's swollen. We have nice thick conductor for the positive. This feels like a four gauge or maybe two gauge wire, very thick. And we have for the negative, 
three what look like eight gauge wires so that's nice to see balance harness kind of just floating but you know whatever one thing i did notice off the rip is the cells are quite large they have laser welds that looks all right but if you look really closely there's a gap right here and what that tells me is this cell right here or maybe this one is subtly puffing up and it's actually pushing the cells apart and giving it a little bit of a gap don't really know what to make of that but it is a concern of mine i mean everything else appears okay with the cell there's also kind of a bend right here, but that could just be how the compression mechanism is being used. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to remove all the cells and everything out of the whole box. Bottom of the cells, there's no foam or anything, and there's also nothing in the bottom of the box. So you gotta be careful setting this down real hard. You might mess the cells up. As far as compression, it is using the plastic, what I call shipping straps or whatever these are with two plastic, actually it has metal end plates and that's what they're using to compress the cells slightly. And yeah, there appears to be a gap, like right here I can wiggle this uh, insulation paper. There is insulation paper between all the cells. I do like to see that. There's a very thin layer of foam right here. There's some foam right here on the BMS. Looks like we can get a good look at that. Piece of foam right here as well and same on the back side. I don't know how good this is gonna show up on camera, but it actually says on here LF280K 896 watt hour and if we do the math 896 divide that by the voltage of 3.2 which is the nominal voltage of the cell we get 280 amp hours so these are actually 280 amp hour cells it was pretty amazing that we got over 280 so that is a good thing as far as the quality of these cells is, is concerned however that also does indicate that the 300 amp hour on here is more or less a lie it's really a 280 amp hour battery which i kind of guessed and figured in my head because they don't make a 300 amp hour exactly cell i believe they make some 305 or 306 amp hour cells and then they go up to like 314 or 315 or something like that. I didn't know they had an exact 300 amp hour cell. Maybe they do. Someone can correct me if they do, but I don't think they do. I'm going to try to use a QR code scanner on my phone. I'm going to try to look up and see what kind of batteries these are. And these are actually EVE cells. So that's actually really good to see. It even has a model number and everything. And it says they were made in August of 2023. Oh, what happened? So yeah, guys, that's actually a really good sign. They use EVE cells. That's a really good brand and they're not extremely old. You can go here to their website, which is just gonna bring you to the EV battery website, which is all in Chinese. So very interesting. These are actually EV cells, nice. It doesn't look like they're grade B or anything like that. They don't have a B marked on them anywhere. As far as the BMS concerned, it does have a nice beefy BMS with a very large heatsink on the bottom. The BMS is not really being held to the battery with anything at all. It appears that the foam actually sandwiches it to the battery when it's inside the case. Obviously that's not great. Uh, it has one of these thermistors, which we've seen in some other batteries that we've tested and it says 75 C. So I believe this is only like a high temperature protection. This battery doesn't appear to have low temp cutoff protection. I don't see a temperature sensor anywhere and it actually doesn't advertise it anywhere as well but the bms does look nice and beefy i mean we were pulling 275 amps through it and it didn't give up or smoke or do anything crazy so that is good to see the balance harness has a little bit of goo right here holding the connector onto the board so that way the connection can't come loose there's a little bit of a rip in the wire right here but i don't know if that was me or maybe when they shoved this whole thing into the case and here's kind of a better close-up of the whole battery itself for y'all who want to see or are more detail oriented i gonna be honest, guys, it looks pretty good. Other than that swollen cell, that kind of has me a little bit worried. But now that they're seeing that they're EBE cells, I'm not really too worried about it now. There's really not much more to see, guys. I'm going to go ahead and slap this back in the box. Well, guys, what do y'all think about this cheap 300 amp hour battery? At the time of recording this, I actually bought this battery a few weeks ago, and I actually tried to find the listing for this video exactly to reference it, and as well as to put the link, and I actually couldn't find this battery anywhere. So if you guys are able to find these, I actually think they're a pretty good value for the money. I mean, this thing was about 267 bucks. Super cheap. EV cells, pretty decent looking BMS. The build quality is okay. It is on the cheaper side. Being as that it has really good cells in it, and the form factor is really nice for a 300 amp hour, or I'm sorry, 280 amp hour battery. It's all right, I don't think it's that bad. Dump fume is kind of known to have the cheapest of the cheap as far as batteries goes. I've seen some other people review the 100 amp hour versions and they all pass their own testing. This thing pulled 305 amp hours and I was able to pull over 275 amps out of it. Don't know what the maximum current is on this battery, but I wouldn't pull more than one C out of the battery personally. So let me know what you guys think about this thing and what else you guys want to see me do with it. We'll test it in another year and do some more cycling on it and see if it holds up. That's it, guys. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you all in the next one.